Were you expecting some huge multiverse revelation from Loki? Did you get one? We're going to talk about the finale of Loki season two, episode six. Full spoilers. I am the man you may know as a from our reviews will kill you and a like and a subscribe would be greatly appreciated. But let's talk specifically about the episode. Let's break it down. Let's find out exactly what happens if it can be discerned. So I've watched for those of you who don't know, I've watched every Marvel television show. I watched all of Miss Marvel. I'm not one of those reviewers that skips out on things so that they are not informed. I'm here to give you my opinion on everything because I've checked it all out. And have I got some thoughts about low key? Um, what I would initially say after taking this entire season in, if it wasn't Loki. And it was some other show, like a Doctor Who spinoff or something like that. I think I would have liked it better than I like it as it stands. I don't like the... I think as a, its own science fiction show with the production design and everything that happened, I think I would like it better. But as it's supposed to be connected to everything else and it's starring Tom Hiddleston as Loki, I don't... I think it's real thin what they put together here. You know, Loki grows into his glorious purpose as the title of the show indicates. And I'm just not feeling it. And based on the what happened in this episode, the entire season two doesn't exist and is irrelevant and never actually happened. So everything we did to get to this point, other than Loki's character growth, is done and irrelevant. So... Let's get into it. Let's take a look at it. Apparently, TV Line wants you to grade this. Right. Wow. Loki. So cool. So, it took a lot of rewinding and centuries of studying. Right. So, Loki, as we suspected, figures out how to time slip. So, the entire plot of this episode is he's putting himself in different places in time so he can figure out how to put the puzzle together again. How can he stop he who remains? How can he stop the loom from breaking? And what's interesting is what they do to Kang. And I think this was like, if you want to interpret it as a way for them to move away from Jonathan Majors and their, their Kang problems, this was it. <laughs> So they have this kind of like time loop. It's almost like Groundhog Day that Loki's stuck in where he keeps going back and trying to fix the the loom and he, and he takes him, you know, centuries to figure this out. Loki ends up they just keep spaghettifying Victor Timely over and over and over again to the point where it's where killing Kang is a joke because you could just keep killing Kang and it's irrelevant, and nobody cares. There's no stakes on the idea that he gets killed. So it's even a montage of him just dying over and over again. And eventually he figures out that this this isn't going to work. That he can't save the timeline. He doesn't really understand what's going on. And he goes, you know, the loom was never made to accommodate for infinite branches. It's like trying to divide by zero and then sylvie says as soon as the sacred timeline started branching the loom was doomed to fail so finally he gets to the point where he's like well i got to keep going back in time and back and back and back further until he finally find he's in season one now where sylvie wants to kill he who remains and he who remains apparently and i don't remember him saying this but he said that he would be, I know he said he would be back, but I don't remember him saying um, that it's it's like reincarnation. He says that line, and I don't remember that being in the first line. But either way, apparently he who he who remains is behind it all again. He's the one who allowed 
Loki to figure out time and, and skip through time. And the only problem that's left is that he finds that the loom is really just a, a failsafe. And when it's overloaded, it's designed to delete all timelines, including the TVA, in order to keep the sacred timeline. So he who remains will be fine. Nothing matters other than do you need to kill Sylvie or not? And Loki's like, I'm going to change the equation. And, and this is where none of it makes any sense, unless he who remains decided that he wanted Loki to to take over his role. Uh, so essentially, Loki um, goes, he talks to, he kind of goes and visits his friends one last time to figure out what he wants to do and what needs to be done. And instead of killing Sylvie, he decides that he is going to take on his glorious purpose and he will become he who remains. He goes back in and he goes out and he grabs all the timelines, and binds them all together, goes to the end of time, sits on the golden throne that he's been talking about. And when he ties all the branches together, he essentially becomes the world tree, Yudrazel, from the Nine Realms. Interesting concept, I guess. Um, like I said, if this wasn't Loki... Maybe I'd be happier with it. And I, I get that they're trying to retcon his glorious purpose, but him just getting beat up by Sylvie over and over again and him getting, like, I don't know. I don't know. So then they do like a, a post review and an after. And here's one of the things that they did that was um, another slight to Jonathan Majors, an easy way for them to get out there. So essentially, Loki maintains the multiverse, allows all these crazy timelines to exist. There is no sacred timeline, I guess, because a lot of the details are just glossed over and, and just not explained. But they do go into um, how there's, you know, uh, he who remains goes, well, there's going to be, you know, infinite versions of Kang, and they're going to cause a multiversal war and just destroy everything. But Mobius is pouring through his reports on the He Who Remains variants. And all of the He Who Remains variants are unaware of the TVA. And apparently, one of them caused a ruckus in a 616 adjacent realm, which is the Quantum Realm from Ant-Man and the Wasp and Quantum Mania, but they handled it. So basically, they're saying, well, Kang can come, but he's not that difficult to deal with. The TVA knows about him, will take care of business, and, uh, you know, Ant-Man and some ants beat up the other Kang, so he says he's a big deal, hard to kill, but he's, he's really not. And then you see B-15 gets a desk in the war room. Who's pruning vines? Like, I don't even understand what the point of the TVA is at this point. Who's pruning vines when... Loki turned into a tree. Like I don't I don't get it. What is their job exactly? At least I understood their job initially, which was to keep the sacred timeline from being overwhelmed and getting rid of whatever variants they wanted. I mean, it was good to see Loki back in a Loki costume, but you know, I just I, I can't imagine people are happy with this. Uh, young Victor Timely does not find the TVA handbook. Uh, OB opens up a second edition of the TVA handbook. Do they explain any? No, don't explain anything. Judges, analysts from the TVA, no, none of it explained. Renslayer shows up at the void, and, and she's worried she's going to get eaten by the thing that eats time, I guess. Sure, whatever. And Mobius is going to go see his two sons. And then Sylvie walks off, and Loki sits at the center of his throne, getting what he finally wanted. So, I mean, I just, there's nothing to this episode. There's just nothing. This entire season was irrelevant. Everything that happened, unless you consider it character development, 
was irrelevant to Loki. Like, you know, if this was if it being selfish and this was being his glorious purpose, I mean, he he gets to sit on a throne. Like, I I don't really get. I don't. I just don't get it. And you know, if it was a different science show with the production value, and I, I I like the aesthetics, I like the TVA in the sense of like I like the way that the sets are designed. I think they're really awesome. I think the actors are fine in it. I think the concepts uh, they don't explain anything for science fiction show. It's very soft science fiction. Like we're not going to explain anything. Things are just going to be whatever. Um, but I just, I f left me feeling as empty as the entire season was because it was all irrelevant. What was Sylvie's character arc? Tell me what is her overall character arc? Somebody let me know. I have no idea. Uh, disappointing. Yes. It's, it's not the worst thing I've ever seen. I, Cause I've, I've watched, you know. Falcon and the Winter Soldier and, and Miss Marvel and those things. So, um, but it's still disappointing. But not, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I even don't even hate Jonathan Majors because it was funny to watch him get torn up. I don't really like his He Who Remains portrayal, is like so slapsticky. It's annoying. But what are you going to do? Uh, the fact, and it seems to me like they're backdooring him out of the show. And I suspect those little Easter eggs about the little adjacent thing and, and the the him getting spaghettified over and over again might have been a re-edit so that they that that montage seemed a little forced. So maybe they're just looking to backdoor Kang out of there and they don't need to worry about it. And maybe this closes the door on Loki. I don't know. What do you think? Do you want to see more of Loki? Do you want to see a season three of Loki? What? where do they even go with all this i like the symbolism of it tying it all to the to the world tree which is cool but i just don't feel like they earned that i just feel like this was like somebody was sitting in a writer's room and they went okay what do we do with loki oh loki's always talking about his glorious purpose awesome he wants to sit on a throne awesome Let's have him tie up all the time and he can take the place of he who remains, which doesn't even make sense in the first place. Awesome. Let's do that. Well, how do we get there? Doesn't matter. Let's just do it. We'll get there. You can't stop us. Barely. It's super easy. Barely an inconvenience. So anyway, let me know what you think in the, in the comments below. Let's have a discussion. Let's talk about it. I don't know if people are even still watching this. I think it lost half of its audience. Uh, but we do have a uh, podcast for you to listen to. It's on 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Friday nights. It's a lot of fun. Come join us. Come join. Bring a drink. Bring your friends. Whatever you want. You can also get that same podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify. We appreciate you. Thank you for sticking around this long. I do appreciate it because I'm no k k k kang but I am on to the next one. 